If I select closely under this text over the water and I type in reflection of text and hit generate, it'll actually give me a reflection of that text in the water with a little bit of an effect. And that's just one of the uses for Adobe's generative fill. Another easy one is just to select over something you want to remove, hit generative fill, leave the field blank and then hit generate and it will simply disappear. I have a lot more uses for generative fill, but these can be a little hit and miss, but let's get into it. It's pretty easy for editing faces, so you can change eye color by selecting the eyes and simply typing in the eye color you want. And you can do the same thing if you wanna change the color of lipstick, or if you make a very rough selection around someone's hair and leave the face untouched, you can actually change the color of someone's hair pretty convincingly using generative fill. And if you don't like one of your generations, you can simply go to your layers panel and turn that layer off to reveal what is underneath before you generated that fill. I can also grab this anonymous bald gentleman and give him some long hair or even a beard if I decide I want to do that as well. I can even add some dodgy sunglasses. You can also select blemishes and little bits of noise. Just simply select them, leave the field blank and hit generate and you can start to speed up your repair of old photographs. It won't do the whole job, but it'll definitely make things a lot easier. Also, if you just roughly select the sky, you don't have to be too precise. You can also change the sky in your images really easily. Also, if you select a subject and then invert that selection, you can easily change the background of your images using generative fill by typing in a description of the scene you wanna see. And we get something like this. It's also surprisingly good at adding mirrors into scenes, but it's not always 100% perfect. I've got this guy who's pretty poorly cut out. If I control or command click that layer to select him, I can expand that selection to make it a bit larger. Then I control alt or command on option click that layer to deselect it. I then select, modify and expand that selection again it creates a selection that is slightly cut into him and slightly around him. And it's around all the edges that we need to fix. And I can now get a generative fill, leave the field blank, hit generate, and it will blend him into that background more effectively. You can also just select an entire blank canvas and use it to generate images just straight up. Or you can actually go to your quick mask, and then move up to your paint bucket tool and then make sure you select something about 50% gray and then fill that quick mask with 50% gray, hit Q to exit and then generate a style over that image. And it will actually use it like an image prompt and create something that is in line with the original image. Select a gap between two completely separate images and then hop on a generative fill, leave the field blank and click generate and you'll find it'll actually fill that gap for you pretty effectively. You can also do this by popping one image inside of another image if it is similar enough. Simply select around the area that the image is in and then select around, deselect around the area you want to keep, hit generate fill, keep it blank and generate and it'll actually blend that image into the image behind it. If I select around the bottom half of this guy standing in the field here, I can type in deep water reflection and it will actually generate some water with the reflection of the guy in it. This can be used for you know buildings or castles or anything really. You can also find blemishes in skin and by leaving it blank, you can actually smooth those out. Or you can highlight a section of the skin, type in smooth skin and it'll actually just smooth it out even more. If seeing the Terminator without a t-shirt offends you, select around his upper body and type in shirt and you'll find it will replace it with a shirt. Although his build doesn't match, so sometimes you'll have to use a few keywords in your prompt to better describe the build of the person under the shirt. And experiment with that, see what kind of results you get. You can also try playing with hats. Obviously this works also for changing clothing from casual to formal or anything else you want to actually change it to. Create an even selection in the middle of your image and then invert that selection and you can actually create all sorts of fun, creative borders to go around your image as well. This also works in reverse. You select the uh, image you wanna keep and again, invert that selection and simply hit generative fill with a empty field and it will fill in the outside and remove any framing around an image. This same technique works when you sort of use the crop tool to extend an image out. You can again, select that image, invert that selection 
and hit generative fill with an empty field and let's extend it again. And then if you want to, with any image, you can also zoom in and start adding objects. Simply select, type in what you want in that area and just keep going with it and see what you can create and add into that image. It's a lot of fun, although sometimes things don't line up and don't size it as well as you'd hope, but it is a bit of fun to play with to see what kind of results you can get. Another cool use, if I pop this guy in the middle of this field here, he should be actually casting a shadow. So if I select behind him and just hit a blank generate, often it actually generates a shadow that suits the scene based on other shadows in the picture. You can also select around some text, Control Alt or Command Option click that text layer and then expand that selection by a couple of pixels. And then you can actually use generative fill to create effects from around the outside of that text. Some of them can be hit and miss, but this time, if you want to add something else, you can actually control kick click your text layer, make sure the top layer is selected, and then you can actually expand that again by a couple of pixels and go to generative fill and give it a light or some kind of texture. And then when it's done, it might not be exactly what you want, but you can also play with the opacity to make it a little bit more subtle and it will have blended that into the wall as well, just a little bit better. You can also change facial expressions, although this doesn't always work as well as you'd hope. And if you're feeling fancy, select around someone and add jewelry to them. Although certain jewelry works really well, like necklaces, whilst other bits of jewelry kind of don't work as well as we'd hope, but it's still a pretty cool feature to play with. And of course you can apply this to any of your AI art made with Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion or Leonardo AI or anything like that and uh, go to town on it. So I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please consider giving it a like, check out my channel for more. Otherwise, I hope to see you again soon and have a great day.